All right, so today's video, we're gonna be doing another video that's a highly requested video on my channel, and that is a menu setup for the Sony ZV-E10, both for photography and for video. So get out your camera, make sure all those batteries are charged, and follow along and let's set up our cameras together. So I will be putting chapters down in the timeline, so if you guys wanna skip ahead to certain things, you can, or if you need to skip back. Uh, but first, we're gonna start just with some general setup. And as we get to certain parts of the menu, it'll kind of switch between video setups and photography setups. So one thing I do want to say right away is I am setting my camera up for North America. Uh, I am currently shooting in a mode called NTSC, and that's what we shoot here in North America, and it's all to do with like power grids and everything else. So some of the frame rates that you'll see in this mode NTSC is 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, and 120 frames a second. So if you live outside North America, you're gonna be using PAL settings, and that's P-A-L, and that's gonna be things like 25 frames a second, 50 frames a second, 100 frames per second. So in my video while I'm setting mine up, if I'm saying things like 24 frames a second, just assume that I'm talking about 25 frames a second, or instead of 60, it'll be 50, and 120 would be 100. Just use kind of the closest number you have to what I'm referring to. Now, if you live outside of North America, don't go to NTSC unless you're shooting inside of America because you will get some weird flickering issues with uh, power and lighting if you're shooting in the wrong mode. Also in this video, we will be setting up the S and Q mode, which is one of the three modes that you'll see in the top of the camera. S and Q stands for slow and quick. So this is a very easy way to get your slow motion settings or your fast motion like time lapses set up in this camera so that you can shoot slow motion and time lapses easily. The one thing that I will tell you about the S&Q though is that it does pre-render your footage to that slow motion or fast motion. You won't have to change that in post, but you will not record audio when in that setting. So just let you know on that. We'll talk more about that when we get to it. So let's get right into it. Let's pop into our menu and let's start setting up our Sony ZV-E10. All right, so now when you first get your camera turned on here, you're gonna take a look at this top button, which is gonna be your photo, your video, and your S and Q mode. Uh, next to that is your record mode, and then you have your custom button one. Uh, we'll get into that later what those are, but, so first you're gonna to wanna to find that button, and we're gonna scroll through until we get back to photography. Uh, so you have movie, S and Q, and back to photography. All right, so now let's jump into the menu. Uh, we're gonna hit menu here. So looking at your menu, you have a one, a two, a globe, a play button, a tool case, and a star. Uh, if we scroll through those, you'll notice the first one is gonna be mostly for photography. The second one is gonna be based on your video. The globe is gonna be all your network, your connections, your PC remote, um, stuff like that. Playback is gonna be, the play button is your playback. We probably won't even be going through that at all. Uh, toolbox is going to be all the like extra tools like your gamma assist, your brightness, your monitor, your volume settings. Uh, most of the stuff that we're going to have in there, we're going to actually put into your quick buttons anyways. So, And then the last one here is your my menu. Uh, if you find yourself using some of these settings time and time again, you can actually save them into my menu and that way you can get to them a whole lot quicker and a whole lot easier. So let's start with tab one. So on the side here, you'll see one of 11. So that's gonna be what page you are on in that menu. Uh, there's 11 pages in the tab one for video. So let's just start right away at the top here. Uh, and like I said before, if you guys wanna set up your camera slightly different than how I'm telling you, absolutely go for it. Um, this is just how I personally have mine set up. So, uh, so right away, if you're gonna scroll down here, you'll see file format. I have mine set to raw. I like to edit every one of my photos. I like to push my colors. I like to adjust a lot of stuff. So I want the absolute most information so that I can edit my photos in a more professional way. Uh, if you guys wanna just take photos and not have to worry about editing them or even just doing some slight minor editing, I would maybe just switch to JPEG. You will have a whole lot less data on your camera taken up because of that. Um, but you can't edit JPEGs too far, otherwise they start to get noisy and blown out and weird things happen. So if you're a person who uses Lightroom or things like that and really wanna push your photos to be as good as they possibly can, shoot in RAW. Uh, now, if you wanna have both RAW and a copy of the JPEG, you can do that as well. Um, I personally set mine to RAW. You guys do what you wanna do. Uh, your JPEG quality, if you do shoot in JPEG, uh, you obviously probably want to shoot in fine, extra fine quality. That's the highest quality. Just leave that on extra fine. 
Uh, your JPEG image size, you wanna make that as large of a file as you can so that you have the most resolution. So do keep yours or switch yours to L and 24M. Aspect ratio, now this is going to be what you wanna be shooting your photos in. So the standard aspect ratio of photos is gonna be three by two. That's can probably be the default to your camera. Uh, you do have the option to go to four by three, 16 by nine. Now 16 by nine you'll be using all the time for thumbnails if you do YouTube. Um, that's one thing that's gonna be like your video aspect ratio. And then you do have a square one by one. I am going to set mine up as a three by two, but we will probably set this one in our function menu so that we can toggle between three by two and 16 by nine when needed uh, for things like thumbnails. Um, so let's skip to page two. So if you hit the right button over, uh, long exposure noise reduction, um, go ahead and just leave that on. If you want to do your own noise reduction in post, uh, then turn it off, but most people leave that to on. Uh, color space, pretty much you're gonna wanna leave that at RGB. You can change it to Adobe if you want, but uh, I leave mine at the sRGB. So let's skip to page three here. Uh, I'm going to be shooting my photos in manual exposure. Um, that means I'm running full manual. I'm running my aperture, my shutter speed, my ISO, all of those I'm selecting how I want to shoot my photography. <laughs> so if you guys want to shoot more of an automatic mode, you can definitely change that to like a shutter priority, which is going to change everything else but the shutter that you select. So aperture priority is going to allow you to select what aperture you want, which is how much light comes in the camera, and then it will automatically adjust the shutter speed and the ISO. Uh, program auto is going to be, it let, let the camera do all the work for you. So intelligent auto is similar to program auto, but it's gonna do a different features. It's got more of an AI that's gonna sense what you think it's taking a picture of, and it's gonna try to adjust on the fly. Um, and then you're going to have a bunch of different things like portrait shoot modes, um, panorama, if you wanna switch it to a panorama to get a wide photo. Uh, and then it does have like memory recall if you wanna save some stuff. I personally shoot in manual. I would recommend if you guys wanna get into photography, just start switching to manual manual mode now and try to learn your aperture and shutter speed as you go. Um, but otherwise, go ahead and leave it in program auto if that's what you're wanting to do. I'm gonna leave mine in manual exposure. So drive mode is gonna be how your camera takes photos. Uh, most of the time you're gonna leave this in single shooting, which is gonna be, it's gonna just shoot one time when you push uh, the shutter down. Continuous shooting is going to be when you want to take a burst of photos. So if like a car is driving by and you want to get, if you just want to get a spray of photos where it's going to take, you know, 12, how many ever photos it's going to do in a row in a burst. So you can make sure you get that picture that you want, switch it to continuous shooting. So the mode below that is going to be your self timer. You can change that by toggling right and left. You can change it from uh, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. Um, I would probably leave it at two seconds if you're doing things like selfies. But otherwise, if you need to do like a family photo, hit the button and run back and group, go to 10. So the next one down is the self timer, but it's gonna take multiple images. So it's gonna take like multiple photos. Um, I've never even used that once, so let's skip all that. Uh, if you do bracketing images, you can use these setups. But 90% of the time, you're gonna be in single shooting mode, so we're gonna leave it on that. Uh, interval, if you wanna shoot intervals, and this is going to be like for time lapses. Uh, if you wanna shoot intervals, turn that on. Uh, and then you would want to say your start shooting time is how long after you hit the button is it going to start shooting. And then the one below that's going to be how often is it going to take a photo? Is it three seconds, four seconds, one second? Uh, how many number of shots you're going to want? So if you're doing like a long time lapse, you might want to put 300 shots. Personally, I stopped using interval shooting because the S and Q mode does time lapses now. And it actually pre-records it into the camera into your 24P timeline. So you don't have to do anything anymore. You don't have to bring these into post, line them up and put them into an editing program and like try to get them to be all, it's, it's, it's S and Q is way easier. And I would just recommend using S and Q instead of interval shooting. So let's uh, go back here. Uh, if you want to set memory recall, you can do that to your settings. If you have settings that you really want to recall back, you can do that. Uh, focus mode, I always set mine at continuous AF. Um, you can use these other ones like manual focus, um, single shot autofocus, but I always set continue autofocus on my camera and then I will switch to manual focus when needed. 
Uh, focus area, this is gonna be dependent on what you're shooting. I personally use wide because, so if I'm taking photos where I'm deliberately putting someone on the side of a photo and then having more room on the left or right, um, I want that to be a wide focus point. Uh, but if you are shooting stuff where you want dead center all the time, you can definitely put center and it's gonna, tr it's gonna priority to shoot the focus in the center. Um, but like I said, I do leave mine at wide and I will use center if I need to, but I can set that up in my function menu instead. So going to focus, let's see, autofocus with shutter, you can turn that on, pre-autofocus. That's probably gonna be a default setting anyway, so just go ahead and leave those. Uh, focus frame color, if you wanna change your thing to red on the focus, you can. The camera defaults to white. I would just leave it at white, and I'll show you why later. I'm gonna set my peaking focus to red, so that doesn't confuse you. Um, so let's skip to page six. Um, ISO is going to be your setting on how bright your digital ISO is going to be. Um, I just leave that where it's at because you're going to be changing that all the time anyways. So now we got to the metering mode. What this actually is, it's going to define what part of the frame it's gathering exposure for to get the uh, button that shows up on the bottom telling you if it's overexposed or underexposed. I leave mine at multi because I want it to be all points collectively telling me my shot is overexposed. Sometimes I'll switch mine to center if I am outside in like a really bright area and I don't want that background to like confuse the camera. Most of the time I'm using multi-metering, so just go ahead and leave it on multi. So face priority in multi-metering. Uh, if you are using multi, you want to turn that on because then it's going to prioritize your face based on its eye tracking for uh, metering. That way, like I said before, if you are outside, it's going to hone in on your face and it's going to use that as its metering. So leave that on. Uh, if you want to, I would leave my, my step at 0.3 EV instead of 0.5. Um, I just like using the stops that way instead. So flash mode, uh, quite honestly, I don't use flash. I don't, I'm not a portrait photographer. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave all this alone. Um, <laughs> we're skipping that page altogether. So white balance, go ahead and leave yours set at auto in your menu because you will be changing this on the fly most of the time anyways. Um, I will show you why. Um, priority set in auto white balance, go to standard. D range optimizer, this is going to be something where if you wanna have the uh, dynamic range optimized, I just leave mine set to auto. Creative style, I leave mine at standard because I like to do editing and post myself. So if you really want to change yours to like vivid colors or portrait colors, this is just giving you kind of baked in uh, filters if you might. Uh, picture profile, uh, you will never want to use a picture profile when in photography. That is a very bad idea. I don't know why Sony puts this in their cameras, but uh, in video we might use this mode, but for now <laughs> let's leave that one set to off. Uh, so soft skin effect, this is going to be effect that only works in video, uh, but this when you turn this on, is going to give you that beauty mode. It'll soften your skin. I think there's like three levels that it has. So if you are really into making yourself have softer skin, go ahead and change that. I personally leave it off because it looks weird on me with a beard. So we're gonna just skip that one. This page, you're probably gonna leave most of these alone because those are, yep, we're gonna leave manual focus, yep. So peaking setting, going to the bottom of page 10, um, I turn my peaking to on, I turn my peaking level to high, and I turn the peaking color to red. Um, you can change it to yellow, blue, or white, but I like red, it shows up the most on the camera. Now what this is, let me get out of the menu. Uh, when you switch to manual focus, like I did there, you'll see now that uh, there's a bunch of red on the lenses in front of me. And as you see, when I zoom in here, you can see it moving when I change the focus. When that thing lights up red on the part that you want it to, then it's in focus. That's how you can tell if something's in focus in manual focus. Uh, and I leave it at red because like I said, it shows up the most. Uh, this is going to be the same thing for video. So when you're shooting in manual mode, I would highly recommend always turning on your peaking so that you see the color and not just what you think you see in the screen because this screen is not quite good enough to really sense that and especially when you don't have a viewfinder, peaking is a very good thing to have. Uh, you can turn off the setting to have it zoom in and not zoom in. Um, personally, I like leaving it on so you can really, really define where you want the focus, so. 
but that's what peaking display is. So product showcase is gonna be the feature where if you're on video and you hold something up in front of you, it's going to immediately focus to that uh, without having to like cover your face because on other Sony cameras that don't have this function, you'll always see like YouTubers, they'll always put the product in front of their face so that it stops the eye tracking and allows it to focus on the other thing. Uh, like, cause if you have eye tracking engaged and you hold up an object to your side, it's not gonna focus to that because it's locked in on your eye. Product Showcase turns that feature off so it gives you face tracking until you hold something up. And it senses that and it'll allow it to focus to that instead. Um, we're gonna leave that off here because it's going to be on one of our quick dials instead. So this next part of the video is more specifically for the video settings. We're gonna start setting up the dial functions on the back and any of the custom buttons. So follow along for that. So now we're gonna to move to tab two. This tab is gonna be more for video. So let's go through these settings here. Like I said before, when I start talking about frame rates, um, I'm setting mine up to an NTSC format. So uh, if you guys are PAL outside of North America, just go to like the nearest number that I'm referring to, uh, like 25, 50, and 100, so on, so on. So file format, this is going to be if you're shooting in 4K or you're shooting in 1080 HD. I bought this camera so that I can shoot in 4K, so I'm always going to shoot 4K. Uh, for some reason, if you guys don't wanna edit in 4K or your computer's not good enough to edit 4K, by all means, switch it to 1080. But for me, I only ever shoot in 4K, except for on this camera, when you shoot in slow motion modes, it will shoot in 1080. Record setting, I turn mine to 24 frames a second because I shoot in 24 frames a second. Um, there's a big debate on what's better, 24 or 30. I like 24, I like more motion blur, I think it looks more cinematic. 30 frames per second is a little more jittery and it looks a little different, than, uh, there's less motion blur. Uh, go ahead and feel free to pick what you want, I'm not gonna tell you, but do pick the higher bit rate because that will give you a better image because it has more data. So S and Q settings, we will come back to that in a minute. Uh, so let's skip to the next page. So I wouldn't really use proxy recording on this camera. Uh, you can, when you import your footage into your editing station, create proxies there instead. Uh, the files on this camera aren't big enough to really justify using proxies in camera. So we're gonna skip that. Um, the next two subjects here are the autofocus transition speed and the shift sensitivity. Um, you can leave those really alone how they are right now because we will set those up in the uh, function menu instead. Um, but if you wanna set it up for now, I turn mine to six, which is basically the fastest, not quite the fastest, and five is the most responsive, that is the highest. Um, I'll tell you why I switched mine to five uh, when we get to that part later. Um, so this is your focus mag. You can turn that to one or four. That's gonna be when you turn it dial for peaking. Uh, audio recording, you wanna turn that on. If it's off, turn it back on. Audio level display, make sure that is turned on. That's gonna show your meter at the bottom. Okay, so now we're at this tab. This is a tab where everyone th assumes, yeah, I wanna reduce my wind noise, so let's turn that on. Uh, don't ever turn that on. The wind noise reduction on these Sony cameras sound awful. They sound like you're underwater. Uh, don't use them, period. If you have wind noise, background noise, you can also get rid of that in different methods in your editing stations, but don't use it on this camera. Just don't do it. Steady shot, we're gonna leave that set to active. That's gonna just default. You're gonna change that anyways when you're at that. So let's go to the next page here, page four. Marker display, you can turn that on or off. I leave mine off. So, all right, so on page four, scrolling down, you're gonna see the record lamp. Uh, that is the little red lamp that's on the front of the camera to tell that you are recording. If you wanna turn that off, it's gonna always default to on with this camera, but if you wanna turn that off, you can, so that way you can be a little bit more discreet that you're recording a video. So maybe you're in an area that's like doing a tour where they don't want you filming and if they see that red light, they're gonna know you're filming. So uh, I leave mine on because I think it's a nice thing when you're vlogging to confirm that you are recording. Uh, so movie with shutter, uh, this camera does have a dedicated record button on the top. You can also turn this on so that you can start a movie with the shutter when you're in video mode. I personally always do that. Uh, the reason being is because now you can change that record button to something else if you want to. So go ahead and turn movie with shutter to on. So this page, we're gonna basically just steady shot, just keep that on. So moving to page seven, you're gonna see display button on the top. If you click into this, this allows you to remove certain things if you don't want them or add them if they're gone. Um, I just leave mine at default because there's no reason I like them. 
Uh, zebra settings, uh, if you use zebras to adjust your exposure, you can turn that on and you can set a level to where it will start peaking and it'll turn on your zebras. So this is really only something you guys are gonna wanna focus on if you're shooting in things like log. Um, otherwise, this camera is really gonna probably just overexpose a lot of stuff anyways, so. Uh, go ahead and just, you could do like 95 and turn it on if you really want, but I'm not going to use it on this camera. Uh, grid line. This is something that I personally like. I always turn mine on to diagonal plus square. That's going to give you the rule of thirds and it's going to give you an X across the screen. What that will do is always allow you to get your compositions a little better. They're just barely there, so you don't really notice them. Um, just go ahead and turn that one on. So keep your exposure set guide turned on as well. Okay, so page eight is going to be a lot of the custom keys and custom functions. We're gonna come back to that in a second here. So going to this page, uh, make sure this is unlocked and turned on. Okay, so getting to the third tab over, which is the globe, uh, this is going to be your smartphone connect. If you download the Sony imaging app on your phone, you can go into this and you can turn on smartphone connection and you can send your photos to your phone uh, it will send only JPEG or uh, a form of that. It won't send raw photos to your phone. Uh, but if you want to take a picture and then send it to your phone, you can do that. I think some video it can do that, but it has to be low resolution for that to work. Um, do keep in mind that you probably want to leave this off until you are ready to send phones. Because if this is turned on, it's going to disable other functions in the camera from working. So I always leave mine turned off until I'm ready to use them. So PC remote function, this is going to be if you're plugging your camera into your computer uh, for things like live streaming, then you would want to turn this to on so that way it allows it to plug into the computer and then it'll tell it if it's going through USB. Um, so you'll go ahead and turn that on when you get to that part. But in the meantime, you can go ahead and leave it off. Uh, I just like to leave these things turned off until you're using them. So Bluetooth settings, if you are using some sort of Bluetooth remote, this would be where you go into it. You can turn things on. I don't have any Bluetooth remotes for this camera, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave that off for the moment. So now we're in the toolbox. The toolbox is going to be all your main settings of the camera. Uh, so things like monitor brightness, you can change to uh, make your screen brighter or darker. Um, I like to leave mine at zero unless you're outside and then when you're outside, turn it up. Do keep in mind when you change your brightness setup on the screen that it might be a little deceiving on what your actual image might look like. So just keep that in mind that your image will probably actually be a little darker than it shows on the screen. All right, so what Gamma Assist is, is if you're using any of the like log footages like S-Log2, S-Log, HLG, uh, this is going to make that flat look that those color profiles give you. Uh, it'll kind of give you what, when you turn Gamma Assist on, it'll kind of make it look like what it's going to look like in post after you correct the shot. Uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about with color picture profiles, you should probably just stay shooting in standard until you can learn that. Uh, but picture profiles like S-Log2, what that does is it kind of compresses your highlights, shadows, so that you get more dynamic range. And then in post, you would expand those back out uh, to bring back the contrast and things like that but mainly it just helps it so that you can have more highlights and shadows in the frame without overexposing. But if you are gonna use Gamma Assist, turn it to auto. That will pick the right one compared to what you're using for log profile. So go ahead and leave that at turn to auto. So your volume settings, this is going to be what your volume is on your camera on the output. Uh, you can crank that if you wanna hear playbacks. I just leave mine alone. Uh, delete confirm, always hit cancel first. Uh, you don't wanna delete things on accident. Display quality. Now this is one you're gonna to wanna to turn to high. So on display quality, you're, it's always gonna default on this camera to standard. You wanna turn that to high because the screen on this camera is not that great. The resolution's kind of poor. So you wanna select high in this mode so that it sets up the best possible screen that you can see. Okay, so on power setting option, this is gonna be kind of like if you wanna make the camera go to sleep if you're not using it. Um, you can set that to two minutes, 10 seconds. You can turn it off completely. So if you're like walking around doing street photography where you want that camera constantly on, turn that off because then you won't worry about it. But if you are the kind of person that forgets to turn your camera off, uh, put it at two minutes and that will shut your camera off automatically so it won't drain your battery. Uh, so then the most important one in this mode is going to auto power off temp. This is the mode, if you're in standard, is going to give you a lot of problems. If you use the camera for more than a few minutes at a time, it will shut off. 
because it's hitting a limit of a heat and then it says we need to shut this camera off. You can turn it to high and you won't have any issues with this camera overheating. Uh, some people say it has overheating issues. Once you turn it to high, it doesn't have that problem. I've never had any problems on any of these Sony cameras after I turned it to high of them actually getting too hot and creating any damage. So don't worry about that either. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, so page two is gonna be where you select your NTSC or PAL. So like I said before, if you are in a different country other than North America, you'll be in PAL. Uh, that's where you'd wanna change it there. Uh, touch operation, go ahead and turn that on. That allows you to touch the back of the screen. So USB connection, just go ahead and leave that set to auto. Uh, let's see, USB power supply. So this, basically you wanna turn this on so that when you plug in a USB to the side of the camera, it'll allow it to charge. Now do keep in mind, if you're recording a video, you can't have a USB-C plugged into a power outlet and record at the same time. If you do that, you will get terrible interference on your audio. So if you are planning on trying to charge your camera while you're recording, you can use a power bank and a USB-C cable, or you can use a dummy battery, which uh, just like a, a battery like the, what I have here that plugs into the wall, or you can be plugged into your computer uh, and turn that on and that will maintain your battery. It won't necessarily charge it or keep it from turning off eventually because it eventually will drain your battery. But do not plug your camera into a power outlet while recording because you will regret that. <laughs> so moving to page four, uh, you'll see one here that says format. What this is, it's going to format your SD card. So if you're using an SD card that has footage on it that you're done with, go ahead and hit format. And what that will do is it'll format that card and erase everything on there and set it up fresh for a new recording. We will be putting this in our main menu, our menu tab too, so that we can get to this uh, quicker because this is how you will reset your SD cards. So like I said, moving on to my menu, uh, as you can see here, I have a few things in my menu already. I have my file format, which selects my 4K or 1080. I have my record setting. I have my S and Q settings and I have the format button so I can format SD cards. So if you wanna to add to this list, all you have to do is scroll over to the next page, hit add item, and this will allow you to pick what you wanna add. Uh, let's say you wanna to get to your grid lines. You can add the grid lines and we'll select there. So now it's added. So now it will be in our menu when we go back to it. So there it is, grid line. This is just a quick way of putting everything into a list quickly so you don't have to search through a menu to find it. Uh, do use this function because it's really awesome to be able to not have to dig through your menu for five minutes. Okay, so we're gonna go back to tab two. We're gonna go to page eight, uh, and this is going to show your custom keys for photo, video, and uh, playback. Uh, so let's start at the top with custom keys for the photography. All right, so let's set up our custom buttons here for photography. So number one is our trash can button. I turn mine to white balance. That is because I like to white balance stuff more often. I like to use either the sun, the shade, the clouds, or even custom white balances. More often than not, I actually use custom white balances and a gray card. Uh, but let's go ahead and select that as white balance. Number two is the main button in the middle of your dial. I'm gonna use that for our monitor brightness so that we can control our outside sunny weather and our brightness of the monitor. Below that, number three, on photography, I turn this to autofocus, manual focus toggle. Uh, this camera does not have a dedicated manual focus switch, so we are gonna use our display dial instead to control our autofocus or manual focus. Uh, scrolling down to number four, it's going to be the ISO button. Um, right now you can see on the side of the camera it actually says ISO, so we're going to leave that as ISO. You would select that and then that'll uh, be able to adjust your brightness. Uh, number five, that is the down button. We're going to switch that to drive mode. That will change it from your single shooting to continuous shooting to timers, so on, so on. So we'll go ahead and set the drive mode. So if you scroll over to the right, you'll get to the top of the camera. All right, so let's go over to the C1 button now. So the C1 button by default is background defocus. Now keep in mind this mode only works if you're in like in automatic mode, like program auto or intelligent auto. So if you're in one of those modes and you hit that button, what it does is it automatically drops your aperture to the lowest number and it'll increase your shutter speed and ISO to compensate for that and it'll make that background nice and blurry. 
but like I said, you have to be in the automatic settings for that to actually work. Otherwise, it won't do anything. Uh, and then number two, we will switch that to movie shooting. This camera does have a, a feature where if you're in photo and all of a sudden you need to shoot a video quickly without having time to switch over, if you hit that button, it will start shooting movie. So go ahead and just leave that set as that. So the page three is only going to be if you have a lens that has a custom button on the side. Uh, the lens that I have on this camera right now doesn't. But go ahead and just leave that as focus hold because that's what you would probably use that for anyways. So going back now, let's go back to the video setting, which is the next one down. Um, by default, I have this all set up to do exactly what the photography one does. With the exception is I changed my number one button to product showcase. So I can do the product showcase mode instead. Uh, otherwise, I would just go ahead and leave all those same settings to do the same thing for photo and video. You're going to get really confused if you try setting these up any different on like, oh, that's right, that's for photo and that's for video. So go ahead and leave those the same with the exception of, of maybe changing that product showcase. Uh, page two, same thing. I just leave it as background defocus and movie shooting. Uh, but like I said before, if you do select your shutter, your shutter button on your photography to also set to record when you start a video, then you can change that red button on the top to do something else. So if you want to do that, you can change that to like eye focus or not eye focus. You can do a lot of different things you can change that to. Uh, we're just going to leave that set for now. Uh, so playback custom button, you can change that uh, FN button to send a smartphone. I would just leave that alone and then leave that as it is. So now we're going to get to the function menu setup. This is probably my most important part that I do with my camera. So when you click that button, you'll see the top mode is for photography. The bottom one is for video. Uh, so we're going to go through real quick and show you how I set up my, my top one for photography. Uh, so in my function menu, I put my drive mode up here. That's going to obviously change your single shooting to continuous shooting, things like that. Um, I put my face eye priority autofocus on this one. So if you click on this, you can scroll through and find that if yours isn't set to that. Um, the next one is my focus area. So if you click focus area, you can go find under the top. You'll see the tab that says autofocus. Go ahead and switch that to focus area. So the next one is going to be focus mode. That's going to switch it from like your manual focus or autofocus. Um, we'll just go ahead and leave that set to that. The next tab over is metering mode. That's going to change your metering for your exposure to wide or multi or center. Uh, we want that definitely there. Uh, product showcase, you can go ahead and change this to whatever you want. I just never changed it. Uh, you probably won't need product showcase in photography, at, like at all. So if you feel like you have something you want to put there instead, uh, go ahead and switch that to whatever you want. So steady shot or no steady shot, um, I just leave mine set there as steady shot. You probably aren't going to turn that off in photography anyways. Uh, the next button is the silent shooting. This allows the camera to not have any noise when you are taking photography. It won't give you a shutter sound. It won't give you a beep. So if you're trying to be like really discreet about taking photos of someone, go ahead and put that there and switch it to that. Uh, next to that is our white balance. We're going to come back to that quite a bit. Uh, aspect ratio. That is a big one for me. So if you're shooting regular photos, you are going to want to switch to three by two. And then if you want to quick switch over to a thumbnail, you'll be able to set it to 16 by nine. So go ahead and leave that set to aspect ratio. Uh, I don't know what that one is. It's probably just left there from default. Same with that one. So if you have any other one, two that you want to add there, go ahead and add. Um, I just never added anything else there. So, so moving down to the video, the first one you're going to want to put there is your audio recording level. This is allows you to change the levels of your microphone, whether it's your default microphone on the top or like a shotgun mic, like, whatever you want to use. So the next one over here is your autofocus select. This is going to be your face priority eye focus. So the next one over is going to be your area. I set mine to wide, so we're going to leave that there. Uh, if you want to change it to center, you can. Uh, then I have my steady shot. This is going to be your standard, your active, or turning it off. Uh, so put that there in your menu for sure, because you're going to come back to that quite a bit. Uh, same thing, you're going to have your multimetering set there. On this one, you'll definitely want to have product showcase. Uh, scrolling down on my bottom left, I put my picture profile there. So if you do choose to switch to like a log profile, 
and that you are going to correct in post, go ahead and put that there. Uh, and then the biggest one for me is putting your S and Q frame rates in the menu, your function menu. That way you will not have to go through your menu every time you want to change your slow motion or fast motion. You can put it here and get back to it very quickly. Uh, the next one over is your autofocus transition speed. We want to put that there. And to the right of that, you want to put your autofocus shift sensitivity. Um, we'll come back once we go in there and I can show you too. Uh, I do have my gamma assist display in here as well. So if you are shooting log footage, by putting this here, you can turn that on and it'll give you relatively what it'll look like in post. So the next one over, you want to put your mode. This allows you to change from uh, manual to aperture priority to shutter priority or to program auto. Uh, go ahead and put that there as well. So now if we go back to our main screen, we can uh, toggle to, let's, uh, let's just toggle, let's toggle to photography. So if you hit photography and then hit your function menu, you can see now how these all come up on your screen. So I have the uh, like drive mode. So now on the fly, I can switch my drive from single shooting to continuous. Um, if you go back to your, you can change your phrase priority. Sometimes if you're shooting landscapes, you don't, and people walk by, you don't want the eye tracking to engage on that person if you're shooting landscapes. So um, you want, <laughs> clearly you want to turn that off if you have a crowd of people that you are not wanting to get priority on. So, but anyways, here's all your things. You can change really quickly on the fly. Uh, same thing with like your white balance. You can change that from white balance, daylight, shade, cloudy, so on, so on. Uh, over here is our aspect ratio. So if you're doing really good photography, you can quick change these easily. Uh, that's really important to put in your menu for that reason. Um, switching over to video, you click that function menu here. You can adjust your volume now for your microphone. Uh, you can turn your focus, eye focus on. You can change your focus area. You can turn your steady shot from active to standard uh, or to off. The reason I put this here is because like when you're vlogging, I know you guys want to have stabilization, but that stabilization in active crops in like 40% and it's not really a, a mode I would use for vlogging. Hopefully you guys can eventually pick up like a stabilized lens and then that standard fun function will actually work for that. But that standard function in the stabilization only works if you have a stabilized lens. Uh, but yeah, you can set up all your product showcase, things like this, your, um, let's see, picture profile. So in your S and Q frame rate, if you click this, now you can go from shooting 120 frames per second video all the way down to one frame per second time lapses. Um, do keep in mind though, if you do change your thing to 120 frames per second S and Q, you will probably have to change your shutter speed if you're shooting in manual to uh, double the frame rate. So if you're in 120, you'll want to switch that to like 250 shutter speed to get the proper uh, effect. Uh, and then your transition speed, this is like it was before. This just allows it to either transition really fast between subjects or really slow, kind of like a nice focus pull. Um, I leave mine generally up high. Oh, like I said, I actually leave mine at six because I think seven feels too fast and it feels weird and kind of unnatural. Uh, and then your, your, your shift sensitivity. If you guys are doing a lot of like talking heads and you're putting stuff in front of you over and over and over and you see that it's doing like a weird kind of focus breathing effect because you're moving too much, go ahead and just change that down to like three or even locked on because that will uh, affect the camera's focus less if you have moving things in front of it. So um, I personally leave mine at five unless I need to change it. <laughs> so going back into the menu, we have one thing left and that's going to be the S and Q. So go back into the menu. We're gonna scroll up to tab two and then go first page all the way down to the bottom S and Q settings. So the first tab here is asking what you want your final project to be rendered in. So I shoot 24P for all my videos. So I naturally want to shoot 24P in all my slow motion for once that's already rendered. Uh, if you shoot in 30 frames per second normally, you would want to select 30. And then with that said, the next one down is going to be the frame rate. That is going to be, do you want to shoot in 120 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 30 frames, so on, so on. Uh, like I said, because we have the setup in our function menu, that's ultimately where you'll be changing this setting anyway. So go ahead and just leave that at 120 because that's probably the most common one you're going to use. Okay, so now we're pretty much completely set up here. I'm gonna switch the camera real quick into S and Q. I just wanna show you real quick this setting in S and Q. So if you hit your function menu, like I said before, if you go to 
120 frames per second. Now this camera is going to record 120 frames per second, render it in camera to 20 down to 24. Uh, but like I said before, you want to make sure that this setting, if you are shooting in manual settings, is at at least 250, which is double the frame rate. So on this camera, we will switch that to 250. Uh, do keep in mind slow motion, you do need more light. Uh, so you will have to find a way to more, more light. So we're going to change the ISO up to back to where your meter at the bottom here shows zero. This is going to be your metering. You want this to always be at around zero. Uh, if you're shooting any log profiles, that would be the only difference. Like in S-Log2, you would actually be shooting at like a plus 1.3, so on, so on. Um, but that's the metering mode and that's how it works. So, so now you would just select that, you would hit your record, you would do your slow motion shot and hit record to stop again. Now when you go to playback, so in camera it has already now rendered it down to 240, making it, I think it's 10 times slower. Uh, so you'll see my hand here now, it is pre-recorded now in slow motion. This is a really awesome feature because now you don't have to worry about changing your frame rates and doing it all in post and slowing everything down. Uh, only do that if you do need to have audio. Um, but if you don't need audio and you're just using it as B-roll, s and is your absolute best friend for slow motion and fast motion time lapses. The one other really cool thing that you can do with the s and Sometimes when you're shooting slow motion in certain areas, your shutter speed and uh, like physical lights on walls and buildings might not match together. So if you are using the non s and setting to do slow motion, everything might look fine and then you get home and you put it in your computer and slow it down. And that's when you find that it was flickering on lights, on billboards, on signs, whatever it might be. Uh, and now you might have to go back to where you went to film and reshoot stuff. Uh, but with the s and you can put it into those same modes, uh, hit record just to test to see if the lights are going to flicker. Uh, and if they are, then you can adjust that real quick with your shutter speed and then go back to your other settings and change it to 120 or 60. Uh, so s and is a really good way to also test to see if lights will flicker. So that just leaves us with the last physical things on the back. Um, like I said before, I do have my shutter now. So if you turn this wheel, that's going to change your shutter dial. Um, if you change this wheel up top here, that's going to change your aperture. So if you want to have more blurred background, you'll want to be at a lower number. If you want to have more things in focus, you'll go to a higher number and then just adjust uh, whatever your shutter speed is or whatever it is to get that exposure back to the correct exposure. Uh, but that's just how you would change your aperture and your shutter speed. So the reason I put the manual focus on my settings here too, by the way, is that sometimes you're wanting to shoot something where you're doing like a reveal around a corner where you're like, you can tap your focus, get everything in focus. And then if you switch to manual focus, now it's locked. So now if I put something in front of the camera, it's not going to change that focus point. That's why I put my manual focus in there. And that's how I mostly use manual focus is just to lock the focus on a subject. Sometimes you'll see in videos, someone will do a reveal shot where they're behind like a wall and then they'll slowly pan out into the subject they're showing. But what you'll see in their video is it'll focus on the wall and then as they come around the corner, it'll refocus to the subject. Uh, if you don't want that to happen, lock your focus on the subject first, switch it to manual focus, then go behind the wall. You'll get a real cinematic look instead. All right, you guys, we're at the end of the video. Thanks so much for following along. Hopefully this video helps you guys a lot. And do keep in mind, you guys obviously don't have to use my settings. If there's certain things that you want to actually put in there that's different than mine, absolutely feel free to do that. This is just a general guide of what I use and how I use my camera. So anyways, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. Uh, if this video has been a help, please hit that like button. It does help this channel. And if you want to follow along to any other ZVE10 content, uh, hit that subscribe button down below. I got a bunch of videos on this camera and a bunch more coming out. So and as always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.